Us and them an extract from Dress Your Family in Corduroy and Denim by David Sedaris word spread that Mr. Tonky did not own a television. And you began hearing that while this was all very well and good, it was unfair of him to inflict his beliefs upon others, specifically his innocent wife and children. It was speculated that just as the blind man develops a keener sense of hearing, the family must somehow compensate for their loss. Maybe they read my mother's friend said. Maybe they listened to the radio. But you can bet your boots they're doing something. I wanted to know what this something was, and so I began peering through the Tonkies' windows. During the day I'd stand across the street from their house, acting as though I were waiting for someone. And at night, when the view was better and I had less chance of being discovered, I would creep into their yard and hide in the bushes beside their fence. Because they had no TV, the Tonkies were forced to talk during dinner. They had no idea how puny their lives were, and so they were not ashamed that a camera would have found them uninteresting. They did not know what attractive was, or what dinner was supposed to look like, or even what time people were supposed to eat. Sometimes they wouldn't sit down until 8 o'clock, long after everyone else had finished doing the dishes. During the meal, Mr. Tonky would occasionally pound the table and point at his children with a fork. But the moment he finished, everyone would start laughing. I got the idea that he was imitating someone else and wondered if he spied on us while we were eating. When fall arrived and school began, I saw the Tonky children marching up the hill with paper sacks in their hands. The sun was one grade lower than me and the daughter was one grade higher. We never spoke, but I'd pass them in the halls from time to time, and attempt to view the world through their eyes. What must it be like to be so ignorant and alone? Could a normal person even imagine it? Staring at an Elmer Fudd lunchbox, I tried to divorce myself from everything I already knew. Elmer's inability to pronounce the letter R, uh, his constant pursuit of an intelligent and considerably more famous rabbit. I tried to think of him as just a drawing, but it was impossible to separate him from his celebrity. One day in class a boy named William began to write the wrong answer on the blackboard, and a teacher flailed her arms, saying, Warning, Will. Danger, danger. Her voice was synthetic and void of emotion, and we laughed, knowing that she was imitating the robot in a weekly show about a family who lived in outer space. The Tonkies though, would have thought she was having a heart attack. It occurred to me that they needed a guide, someone who could accompany them through the course of an average day, and point out all the things they were unable to understand. I could have done it on weekends, but friendship would have taken away their mystery, and interfered with the good feeling I got from pitying them. So I kept my distance, 